All right. Let's go ahead and get started, everyone. Welcome, welcome on this happy kind of spring. I don't know. Here in Chicago, it was kind of like spring, and now we're going to go back to winter. I think it's snowing next week. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well. We are so excited to be with you tonight um, and have some great information to share. So if you're wondering where you are, uh, you are in a Zoom webinar uh, for positive development, and we are going to be talking about a new groundbreaking choice in autism therapy. So very, very excited you're here. All right, so before we officially get started, just a few housekeeping things. Um, first thing is if you are having any weird Zoom issues, chances are it's, it might be your Wi-Fi connection. Um, so just make sure, you know, you close out of all the applications, whatever. Um, and yeah, make sure you have good Wi-Fi. Um, otherwise, we are recording this. So afterwards, we'll send you an email uh, with a link to the recording. So no worries um, if you have to drop off or if something happens, um, we've got you. And we'll be sending something out to you. At any point during um, our, our session today, if you have any questions or think of anything, feel free to use the Q&A kind of chat bubble thing um, here on Zoom. You can ask questions at any time. Um, at the end is when we'll do kind of our Q&A uh, back and forth. So uh, be sure to drop some questions in and then, if you're on the Twitter, if you are a Twitterer, we are um, going to be tweeting and live tweeting our we our um, webinar today uh, using our handle uh, Positive Dev, and we're using the hashtag Play Therapy. So again, if that's your thing, great. If not, just tune it out. <laughs> All right. So now what I would love to do is introduce you to our awesome positive development clinical team from Florida. So uh, first up, we have Dr. Lena Moyano. She is our clinical director of Positive Development Florida. Uh, Jen, Dr. Jenny Trocchio, our director of training and community relations. Christina Clemente, our lead occupational therapist. And Jessica Garrido, our lead speech language pathologist. So welcome ladies, happy you're here. And uh, with that, why don't we, we kick it off officially? Wonderful. Thank you so much, for Stacey, for introducing us. Um, so we, in behalf of the Florida team, we like to really give you a warm welcome. We're really happy that you're here. We're really grateful that you're taking the time this evening to join us and to learn about what we do. And also, we're really, really excited to be able to, you know, have this opportunity to share with you the passion of what we do and this beautiful service that we're bringing to the South Florida community. And also, we have really exciting news for our developmental community. So we're going to be sharing that at the end of the session. Let's get started. Thank you, Mina, for the warm welcome. Before we dive into our model, we wanted to start off with a poll question. These questions are interactive and they're anonymous, but we want them to be self-reflective. So how much do you know about the developmental model? Nothing at all? Just a little bit or a whole lot? Please submit your answers. All right, it looks like um, we've got a great mix of people who are unfamiliar and just a little bit familiar, some who know a lot about it. So a great mix across the board. Wonderful. So for anyone who is not familiar with our developmental approach, we are very excited to share our approach, the positive way. So today we're gonna take you through some of the key components, including a developmental model, the individualized nature of our approach, and we'll talk about how important that is, how we can strengthen relationships. Then how we deliver the model by building connections, our team-based approach, and one of the most important pieces of our model, the parent involvement. Wonderful, so let's get started by really understanding that um, this is not a new, if, even though it's a new choice here for our South Florida community, this is not a new model. This is the developmental model has been, has been it, it started, we started getting, getting it together for uh, 
or in the 70s. Dr. Stanley Greenspan and Dr. Serena Witter got together back in the 70s and they started studying babies at risk with the support of other developmental, not developmental, but you know, interdisciplinary people from different disciplines, they were able to establish an understanding of what happens in development. And through that understanding, we were able to set up a roadmap of how we can help kids with developmental differences. So again, this is not new. This is rooted in 50 plus years of research in the areas of um, psychology, neurology, um, um, child development and education. And all of this relies on everyday activities like play. So it really, the idea is to really make it meaningful. So it's important to understand that autism is a developmental disorder. And that's why it really makes sense to approach it from the developmental perspective. So kids that are having a different development, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're developing in a different way. They're following, so we're going to follow the typical course of development. And what we're going to do is that we're going to target the foundation capacities as opposed to symptoms. So what that means is that we're not going to um, concentrate on tasks or, you know, just like memory things. But really the idea is that we're helping the child from the bottom up, really building those capacities. Um, that we're going to create meaningful, meaningful experiences that are going to help the child develop in a meaningful way. So what we do is that we start where the child is at any given moment. Uh, so for example, we would meet a, a five-year-old child and instead of teaching him what five-year-old people would do, what we do is really meet him where he's at and support him through our connection with him, really by get, getting a, an emotional connection going. So we are giving him the support for him to be the best that he can be, which might mean different things at different moments. And as the early foundations get stronger, the child would move to higher stages. We usually like to use this analogy of the, of the house. So the foundations of a house. So when you build a house, wouldn't you like it to have strong foundations? I'm pretty sure you have met kids in the spectrum that maybe they're very advanced in certain things and they have like amazing memory and then they know a lot of facts, but then maybe they're very shaky in certain things, you know, and maybe like little things will throw them off and they'll just lose it with little things. So again, when the foundation are strong, we become more um, resilient and then we're able to tolerate challenging things. So here we have our second poll question of the evening. How strong is your child's developmental foundation? Very strong, somewhat strong, somewhat shaky, or very shaky? Go ahead and submit your answers. So wherever you think your child is, the good thing is that it doesn't matter. We start supporting the child where they are. And the other beautiful thing to remember is that there's always a possibility for improvement. And, you know, and if we really think about us, there's always room for growing. So it doesn't matter where we are in our developmental stages. We can always, we can always make it better. But let's really think now of what is it that we're talking about? You know, we keep on talking about the foundations and the developmental capacities and the levels. But let's really take a look, closer look to understand what is it that we need? What are these developmental levels, developmental stages that we are thinking to uh, support the child on? So there's meaningful change happening. The very first thing that we want the child to have is regulation and attention. And again, if we really think of ourselves as the basic thing that we have, we need to be calm enough to pay attention to the environment. And which, I mean, it goes hand in hand. You know, we can pay attention because we're calm. We're calm so we can pay attention. So that's the first thing that we, that we think of. 
After we're having that level of attention and being calm enough, then we go into thinking of engaging and relating. So in this stage, really what we're thinking of, what we're looking at is that we're falling in love, that we're relating in such a way that it's just like so much fun that you're enjoying being with somebody else. After that happens, then we become more assertive in the way that we interact. So instead of just like getting the ideas from others, we start kind of like being more intentional with, with the things that we want, being more purposeful. So this is stage, we call it two-way communication. And in this stage, what we see is that there is a back and forth of interaction happening. So again, instead of just being so receptive and taking it all in, we become much more active and emotional and intentional. And we have ideas that we really want. We want the interaction to continue. So it's just be we're becoming more, more active in the, in the interaction. And what happens after is that the interaction becomes much more complex. And we start seeing a lot of circles of communication, a lot of just like back and forth going on. And then we start seeing what we call the shared uh, social problem. So we start finding out ways to manage things. And all of this is in the social context. Once we have that, then we start having more symbols and creating ideas. So at this stage, what we see is a lot of pretend play. And you can think of this, you know, there's a lot of kids that maybe have higher stages, but it's hard for them to come up with ideas. So again, you know, really thinking of the developmental levels, this is what the things that we will be working on. So a lot of symbolic ideas in, at this stage, the ideas, the, the symbolic play, it's usually with one idea. And then once we move to level six of development, what, what happens is that there's a lot more complex interaction and a lot more complex complexity in the pretend play. You are starting seeing a lot of emotional thinking as well, so reflecting in our own emotions. What happens usually is that kids with developmental differences are having something different in this in this stage. So that's why we really go back to understanding where, where are the stages and where, where is it that we need to target. And a nice analogy that we like to use is the Swiss cheese. <laughs> so we think, how big is the hole in the Swiss cheese? So again, it's not like you have it or you don't have it, but really more in terms of how much support do you need at that stage? Now, this can be different throughout the day. This can be different throughout the session and it's totally okay. What we do is really give the support at the, to the child at the level that he's at. That's right. So building on what Dr. Lena just mentioned, um, for intervention to be effective, we really need to be thinking about what's best for each individualized child. And that's important because if you've met one child on the autism spectrum, you've met one child on the autism spectrum. No two are alike. And because autism is not a cookie cutter approach, we want to look past whatever templates there are and we want to think about what does your child need? And then the more we individualize the intervention, the more effective it will become. And so we really think it's important to think about each child's individual profile in addition to development. So in addition to everything Lena just mentioned, we really wanna think about how is each child taking in and processing the world around them. So specifically here, we wanna look at the child's sensory system, the motor system, visual spatial processing, the language and auditory systems, the personality, which is so important and often overlooked. We want to look at the, the passions, the learning style. So we want to really understand what's going on with every single child, because this profile determines how we experience the world, how we interact with others, and how we learn. And the more we understand this child's profile and tailor our interactions to them, then the more effective intervention will be. And so now let's take a moment and talk about behaviors because I know that's probably something on many, many people's minds right now. And a common myth about developmental approaches is that we don't address behaviors, but that is just as I mentioned, a myth. We absolutely do look at behaviors, but actually in a much more effective way than more traditional interventions. So when we see a behavior, most people just look at what's on that very tip top of what's on the surface, 
what's going on there. So things like withdrawal, aggression, rigidity, stereotype behaviors. We've all seen these. But what happens is if you just approach the behaviors, if you try to sort of just help one at a time without looking at the source, it's ultimately not going to work. It's just putting on a Band-Aid. Sometimes I like to think about it as whack-a-mole. I don't know if you guys have seen that game where like the little moles come up and you whack them down. Um, but the same is true with behaviors. If a behavior comes up and you just sort of try to whack it down, it's going to pop up other places. And that's why we at Positive Development really look at the underlying neuro, neuro, neurodevelopmental challenges that the child could be facing. So we look at things like motor planning, learning disabilities, emotional self-regulation, sensory sensitivities, excuse me, speech delays. So we look at the source of the behavior. And when we address a behavior from the source, that's when it's not only gonna be more effective, but also a lot more respectful to the child. So we want to be sure that we are not just looking at what's visible. We wanna be sure to be looking at what's invisible as well. And this is a huge part of our approach that really sets us apart from others and makes it a lot more effective. And you might be wondering, how do we address all of these underlying behaviors? Well, there's two pieces. One is we have a highly specialized team, but also we think about the relationship. Absolutely, and relationships are everything. We can only be in terms of relationships. Through relationships, we feel safe and secure. And once we're feeling safe and secure, then we open up then we try our best, then we feel motivated. All of that happens in the context of relationships. And if you think about it, you know, maybe you're hanging out with friends. And again, you know, I want, really want you to think in terms of, of yourself, you know, because this model really maps up to, to development, to humans, you know. So if you think about hanging out with friends and your friends are, you know, you love them and you share so much with them. And it's just like so much fun to be with them. Maybe they wanna watch a movie that is not the movie that you really want. You can adapt, you become flexible. And all of that happens because you love your friends because being with your friends is so much fun. So you're able to adjust to, you know, whatever you, you, you sacrifice, it's okay. <laughs> and you, you make it happen. So that's where we think of the motivation happening in the context of relationships. We, it's important to keep in mind that emotional and social skills are learned through relationships. And the other big thing that I really want to highlight is that we learn to become through the support of someone else. This is what we call co-regulation and it's something that keeps on happening throughout life. And again, I invite you to think of your life when you're going through a challenge. Isn't your first instinct to call someone who can support you? Someone who can understand you? Someone who listens to you? All of that comes from the relationships. And that's why, you know, it's, it's, it, this is such a big thing in, in the way that we do things that it's just cannot be emphasized enough. Relationships are everything. And the other thing that it's important to keep in mind um, is that we, we get a sense of who we are based on our relationships. And I think this is important because it creates um, self-esteem, you know? So, so think of, the experiences that your child is having through the relationships that can tell him, oh my gosh, you're the smart one. Oh my gosh, you're the funny one. Oh my gosh. Or, you know, maybe you're the difficult one. So it's just really something important for us to keep in mind. Okay. Now this fun slide. <laughs> uh, another concept that we really invite you to think about is what would you want on a first date? And again, Think of what you would want and think of relationships and think of your child. And that would be exactly the same thing. So when you go out with someone, you want someone to be caring and attentive. Doesn't that feel good that someone is paying attention and not just like looking at the phone and just like getting all distracted with things? Someone who's really engaging in the conversation. Someone who cares to ask about you. What is it that you like? And then when they ask you about what you like, isn't it so much fun to have that opportunity to talk about what your interest is? They care, they compliment you, they really understand you. Doesn't that feel good? They're happy to be sharing with you. They're fun to be with. So when all of that happens, don't you wanna hang out with that person again? 
is just kind of like the, the, the next thing. So again, let's think of this in terms of how we engage with our kids and the way that we interact with them. If we interact in a way where they feel like, oh my gosh, you get me. Oh my gosh, you don't want to change me. You accept me the way I am. You just get it and it's just fun. You, you're just awesome. I want to I wanna play with you again. And then the other thing that we think about it is the environment. You really got to be mindful that you're having a good environment to create a connection. So on a first date, it makes more sense to go to a place where you can listen to each other. That is not crazy noisy, but really you can get to connect with that person in a meaningful way. All right, so we've already covered a lot of ground here. Um, so let's sort of take a moment to bring it all together. So how do we move up that developmental ladder? How do we target the individual differences? And how do we build our neurological muscles for relationships and for social communication? And the answer is through meaningful experiences. And this video from Harvard and the Center of the Developing Mind shows us how it all happens in our brain. And then we'll, we'll touch base afterwards to break apart all of these pieces and why they're so important. But let's take a look at what's happening in our brain and how this development happens. A child's experiences during the earliest years of life have a lasting impact on the architecture of the developing brain. Genes provide the basic blueprint, but experiences shape the process that determines whether a child's brain will provide a strong or weak foundation for all future learning, behavior, and health. During this important period of brain development, billions of brain cells called neurons send electrical signals to communicate with each other. These connections form circuits that become the basic foundation of brain architecture. Circuits and connections proliferate at a rapid pace and are reinforced through repeated use. Our experiences and environment dictate which circuits and connections get more use. Connections that are used more grow stronger and more permanent. Meanwhile, connections that are used less fade away through a normal process called pruning. Well-used circuits create lightning-fast pathways for neural signals to travel across regions of the brain. Simple circuits form first, providing a foundation for more complex circuits to build on later. Through this process, neurons form strong circuits and connections for emotions, motor skills, behavioral control, logic, language, and memory during the early critical period of development. With repeated use, these circuits become more efficient and connect to other areas of the brain more rapidly. While they originate in specific areas of the brain, the circuits are interconnected. You can't have one type of skill without the others to support it. Like building a house, everything is connected, and what comes first forms a foundation for all that comes later. Pretty powerful stuff, huh? I think it's really important that we're thinking about what we're doing, not only in terms of the interaction, but how is this changing our brain? And how is this actually helping us from the inside out? And something I really want to emphasize here is that just because a child's younger, that doesn't mean that anything different is happening in the brain. We can build this brain architecture and we can shape it at any point in time. So a question we get asked a lot is, you know, do you only work with kids who are younger? And the answer is absolutely not because we can again, reshape the brain and strengthen development at any level. So now that we saw how it looks in the brain, let's go back to practical, like what does this look like in, in reality when we're actually do, excuse me, doing it? So when we're interacting, our approach is very child-centered. Now, what does that mean? So here we're following the child's interests and intent, and that allows us a window into the child's world. Here, they're letting us know what they like, what they want, what they're interested in, what their intentions are, what motivates them. And when we follow the child's lead, they show us all of that. Uh -huh. We also begin to understand the child on a much deeper level. If we just go in with our own agenda, it's not going to help that much, especially at first. We really need to figure out what's motivating to that child. And then we also want to think about the fun factor, which is often neglected but shouldn't be. The more fun an interaction or activity is, it increases motivation, engagement, meaning, and so much more. 
as we just saw in the Harvard video, there is nothing that fires up the brain like play. And something else I want to emphasize about the fun factor and how important it is, is if a child is having fun with us, we don't need to spend a whole lot of time redirecting them. We don't have to say, say, you know, be here, look at me, don't go there, don't do that, stay here. We don't have to do any of that because if the child's having fun, they're going to want to be with us. So we get to spend so much more time on the good stuff. Our approach is also very respectful. And this is building on that relationship piece. And it's important because we all thrive in the company of someone who respects us, someone who takes the time to understand us, someone who believes in us and our capabilities, someone who has high expectations of us and supports us to be the best versions of ourselves. And that again is how we all thrive. And we also wanna think about strengthening emotional connections. So human connection is the most basic desire that every child, and every parent has. It might not appear that way all the time, but believe me, that is always a driving factor. So here we work with that internal motivation and we work to build those, those strong emotional connections. And the more those emotional connections are strengthened, the more meaningful it becomes and everyone's able to be calm and enjoy each other. So now we have our team-based approach, and we are an interdisciplinary team at Positive Development, and we provide layers of support. So let's look a little bit more closely at those layers of support. At the center of our approach are you and, her fa and your family. You are active members of our team. Our team is led by a mental health professional who provides the tools to enhance relationship in a positive way your child just doesn't get a therapist, but your whole family gets a team. Let's look at the team members. So here you have your speech language pathologists. They provide direct communication services while building foundations of play and relationships. Your occupational therapists provide direct occupational therapy services using sensory approaches to enhance shared attention, regulation, and interest in the world. Our DCCs, Developmental Client Coaches, work directly with you and your child using developmental strategies to enhance outcomes with assistance from all of the specialists. Your parent educators educate and guide you through the developmental approach, providing videos to support your progress. And last but not least, our care coordinators, and they work with you to coordinate the right fit of care for your family. Christina said, here's the team. All of us work together to ensure every family's needs are met in a meaningful way. We focus on the relationship of your family while implementing interdisciplinary strategies. Your family is our top priority. Each member of our team is highly trained in the developmental model and all of our interventions are guided through the model. All children at Positive Development have a clinical review weekly with all the staff. The staff works together to provide the best course of treatment to maximize success. Developmental client coaches, also known as DCCs, help build meaningful relationships. Reality is that life is hard and full of responsibilities. And DCCs are here to support your family and bring the team to you by alleviating the pressure of tackling your child's development alone. DCCs incorporate strategies and feedback from other disciplines that help increase generalization and support putting in the time needed to engage your child. They focus on your family, emotions, and physical well being, not on the behavior. And by concentrating on the relationship and the source, like Jenny said, with the tip of the iceberg, the overall behavior improves. Building on the core foundation of regulation leads to communication, engagement, and aids in building a strong relationship. DCCs follow your child's lead, learn about their passions, and always presume competence. This creates a better balance for not only the child, but also the parent.
Thank you, Jessica. So now we have another poll question and a self-reflective poll question. Have you ever had a whole coordinated team of therapists supporting and reviewing the needs of your family on an ongoing basis? Go ahead and submit your answers. And now let's look at what we get when we have a balance. Well, we have our competent families. We get strong connections, resilience, and most importantly, we manage our stress. When parents and families receive training and coaching, it empowers them to build a strong bond, and then we can focus on the positives. That is absolutely right, Christina. So in addition to an entire team of specialized professionals here to help you, one of the most important members of our team is you, the parents. So we really think a lot about parent involvement. And we're thinking about both parent training and parent coaching. So let's dive into parent training a little bit and why it's so important. So research shows that the more involved parents are, the more effective intervention becomes. And that's because parents, once they learn the tools and strategies to most effectively engage their child, they can keep those interactions going throughout the day through these little moments, you know, through bath time, through meal time. It could be while you're driving to school. Um, but the more the parent understands the best way to engage and help their child, the more progress can get going in a multitude of settings. So let's see a little bit more about what the research says. So the more involved the parents are, benefits to the parent and family include increased parent self-efficacy, empowerment and optimism, also more quality time together as a family and engagement within the community. And research also shows decreased parent stress and depression. So the more involved the parents are, the more that stress goes down. And that's what we want to see. There's also a lot of benefits for the child. So the more involved the parents are, the child then experiences increased generalization and maintenance of skills, more social communication skills and independence, and more developmental capacities. So those holes, those Swiss cheese holes that Lena mentioned earlier, start to decrease as you start to move up that developmental ladder. And also the child starts to show decreased challenging core symptoms and behaviors. And a benefit to all of this ultimately is decreased dependence on one-on-one -on -one services. And so we sort of wanna see ourselves taken out of the situation. We want things to get cooking. So you, the parent and your child, can keep that interaction flow going and can keep progress happening all day, every day. So let's take a moment and think about parent training, which is one of our fantastic um, programs. So through parent training, the parents and the parent educator get together and our program includes an overview of our developmental approach, short training videos that you can watch on your own time, including strategies determined that would be most helpful for you and your child. We have one-on-one -on -one parent training sessions and also group parent training sessions. So lots of opportunity to learn what works best for you and your child, because it's not always the same thing. And just like intervention for the child should always be individualized, same thing's true for the parents. Let's talk now about parent coaching and really let's start by understanding what is the difference between parent coaching and parent training because truly both of them are really important. So as Jenny was explaining in the parent training sessions, you would meet with the parent educator and you know it's more really about learning about the model and really kind of just like the theoretical and the strategies and really kind of just like understanding what this is about. When you meet with the coach, with the mental health person, we're really bringing all of this to life. So with the support of a mental health clinician, you really start practicing. So all of that happens through coaching, through feedback, and through modeling. And it's also really important to understand that we all have different learning styles. So the mental health person would really read you, <laughs> would really connect with you to see what is it that you need, because every family is different. You know, when we talk about um, uh, individualizing, it, every child has their individual needs and every parent has their individual needs as well. So the idea is that the mental health professional would really connect with you to see what is it that you need. You know, and again, you know, we learn in a different ways. So at once we get to know each other and understand each other, then we can provide the support that you need. 
So through these sessions, what's happening is that we're translating the theory and the techniques to the specific needs of your child and your family. I've met many families that maybe they read books, maybe they watch documentaries and, you know, they went to conferences and all of these things. But it, it, it really makes a difference when you have the support of someone who can really adjust it. You know, there's some techniques that are, do not apply to every child that do not apply to every family. So it's important to, to just have to have someone who's understanding the model and who's understanding your family. So we can really translate that to, to what you need. And then it's also important to consider that as, as Jessica was mentioning earlier, we're bringing a lot to the table. You know, so we have our own emotions, our personality, our worries, you know, just being tired, our ideas of play. You know, our culture, in some cultures, playing is not a thing that parents do. We have our parenting styles, like the way that we grew up, all of that comes into play. And it's really nice to have someone who's able to come to your world and to bring that space of being calm and regulated so we can be present to interact and have fun with the child. Kind of just like putting the worries aside and let's just have fun. So we bring it to action and we can practice. And, and as Jenny was saying, the more that you practice, the easier it is, the more that the child is start creating those connections in the brain and the more easy everything goes. Uh, so the idea is that we're creating a fun, meaningful and successful interaction. And within all of this, what happens is that the child starts feeling a sense of competence, like, oh my gosh, I can play with you and it's fun. And then the same thing happens for the parents, like, oh my gosh, I got it. Oh my gosh, we had so much fun playing together. And again, you know, when you have fun playing together, then both the mom, the parents, the caregivers, whoever is around and the child, wants to do it again and again. So it's just beautiful things happening that we can achieve through this uh, understanding. Thank you, Dr. Lena, that was beautifully put. So now we have another poll question. Would you benefit from parent training, parent coaching, both or neither? Okay, let's, so let's take a quick moment and talk about the overall family experience. So when you decide, oh, maybe I should reach out to Positive Development and see what's going on, here are some of the services that we offer. Beginning with supported from intake by a care coordinator. Also insurance benefits verified by Positive Development. You get matched with a lead, a clinical lead for evaluation, care plan development, and treatment that's all individualized for you and for your child. You get family support through parent training, parent coaching, and individualized sessions with the developmental client coach. And ultimately, we are a one-stop shop with a multidisciplinary team of expert clinicians who love this stuff. We truly love what we do, and hopefully that has come through today, tonight. And each program is created again, specifically for your child. We are not here to mass produce any sort of treatment plans because you know what, they won't work. So everything will be individualized for you and your family. Right, so now, drum roll, um, virtual drum roll, um, we are going to have our question and answer session. So if you have any anything you're curious about, anything you'd like to hear more about, maybe something that we didn't touch on um, that you you want to know, please drop that in to the, um, the question and answer uh, module on Zoom. Of course, I'm looking at two screens. Um, but anyhow, um, while you're doing that, let me just tell you a couple things um, before we get there. So one thing to know is Positive Development is a new company. Um, and we are uh, 
coast to coast. So we have, um, we're providing services in California, in New Jersey, and of course, Florida. Um, so really excited about that. And new locations are going to be coming on board very quickly. So uh, watch the space, more is coming. Um, another thing I'd like you to know is that we are going to be sending out an email with the recording and a few other goodies. Um, so be watching for that email. Uh, we also invite you to connect with us on social. So we're a part of Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, wherever you are, hopefully we'll be there too. And I think there is a special announcement that Lena mentioned at the top of the hour. So Lena, do you want to tell us um, some breaking news here? Absolutely, can't wait. <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask. Really, really excited, guys. Um, so recently, very recently, as of this week, we have been able to get this service, the developmental approach service, covered by Blue Cross Blue Shield. This is the very first time ever that it happens that this model is recognized by, a, by an insurance company. So it's really a big deal. Great news. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing. Yes, it is, it is great. It is great. You know, um, traditionally, ABA is really what's attached to autism services. It's just what's known. It's just what's the norm, what people know, and, and what families understand uh, can have access. So it's huge that now this service is going to be covered by insurance and we have one insurance contract, but more on the way. So really excited, really excited that thing, things are coming this way. Yay. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. Lena. That is awesome. So like I said, things are happening fast and we're growing and um, it is a very, very excited time. We honestly are so excited to be able to bring these developmental model based services um, to more families. And um, yeah, it's just gonna be glorious. Um, all right, <clears throat> so your questions, keep them coming. Um, we're, we've gotten a few here. So anytime you think of something, like I said, uh, go ahead and drop it in. All right, so for our first one, um, we have a question about where the services take place. So are they in person, are they on Zoom, or do you have an option for both? So I don't know who would like to take that one. Uh, I can go ahead and take that one. So currently we are in the process of getting a physical location. So that is coming soon, stay tuned. Um, in the meantime, we offer services virtually. We can go to your home and we also are temporarily renting space at We Rock the Spectrum. So we have lots of options, whatever is best for you and your family. We will coordinate schedules and we will make it work. And where was that location? Because it was funny, just as you said that, there was another question that came in. So where in South Florida is your location? So mm -hmm. where was that again? So our temporary location is at We Rock the Spectrum in Davie, Florida. And our potential new, um, new location won't be far from there. So there's a little teaser, but more information will hopefully be coming very, very soon to confirm the new address. Awesome. All right, um, so here's, here's another question um, about ages. So does this approach, I mean, we talked a lot about youngers or whatever, but does it work for older um, kids or, you know, even adults as well? Um, I don't know who would like to take that, maybe Lena? Sure, I'll take it. It absolutely does. I mean, what happens is that you would follow the same principles and it would look totally different with a little child than with a grown up, but you're following the same principles. And as we mentioned at the beginning, development keeps on happening. It doesn't matter the age. And again, you know, if we think of ourselves, we keep on developing, we keep on learning, we keep on learning to regulate ourselves when things don't go the way that we want. You know, it's, it's just the nature, the nature of things. So just because the child is older, and this is like a huge misconception that a lot of people have that is like, oh, this, is, this only works for little ones, but it's actually not the case. So again, we adapted to where the child is. We meet the child, the individual, the adult, you know, wh whoever the client is. Um, so we adapted to, to, to the needs, to, to, to starting from where the person is. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> um, let's see, word for word here. I am sure each child will have their own plan, but what would the average number of hours per week a child might be you know, in service? What, what thoughts do you have there? 
it varies. It, it really varies depending on the child. And, and, and it's just kind of like hard to give like a set answer, but it can be anywhere from six hours a week, maybe less, all the way to maybe 30 hours a week. And, and again, you know, this service would be compromised of all the things that we say and a mixture. And then, you know, really kind of just like, we, we want to make sure that the needs of the family are covered and the needs of the child. So it, it, it's different, but hope that that helps. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, you know, that makes me think, too, of that <clears throat> um, DCC role. Uh -huh. um, so um, I'm a parent of, and um, I, I think what's so unique about this is, you know, having that, that coach and that support. So um, I don't know, does anyone have any thoughts? Or, you know, where, where does DCC, like, where do they fit in? Um, and how often do you get to meet with them? Well, the DCC really helps you put in the time. They're right there with you and your child, putting in the time, working on those developmental approaches, bridging those levels, moving up that ladder, and really right there with you. So it's all individually based on that family, just like Dr. Lena said, where, but those DTCs are right there with you on that daily basis, getting to know you, getting to know your child, building that relationship and moving up that developmental ladder. So it sounds like they're at home. They come in, they visit and they're in home with you. Mm -hmm. um, do, do they ever go on field trips or do anything like that? I'm just curious. Yes. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll jump in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, especially, well, once it's really safe, um, mm -hmm. once everyone considers it safe to do so, um, as the director of training and community relations, I am a huge believer that the community is a huge part of what we do. And supporting a child at home is so powerful. But what's, what can be even more powerful for some kids, depending on the circumstances, but having that support in real life interaction. So, you know, maybe going to the playground, maybe going to the supermarket, um, maybe it's facilitating a play date, maybe it's facilitating a birthday party, which can be wonderful or horrible for different kids have different, exactly different perspectives, but ultimately we want to do what's best for the child. So we are absolutely not opposed to going into that community and supporting you in it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, all right. <clears throat> I, I, here's another thing I'm curious about. Um, uh, COVID. So, you know, we're all on screens, um, you know, we're all adapting and everything. I'm just wondering, um, you know, how, how has that changed things or, um, yeah, how is it, how is COVID and, and this world we're living in, um, changed the way you deliver services and then what protocols do you have in place? Christina, do you want to take that one? Sure. I mean, Obviously, we have all been affected for this past year. And as today is March 11th, you know, and we're at the year since the whole pandemic started, we've come a long way. We work with you and your family on your comfort level as far as COVID concerns are going. We do follow all CDC protocols along with ASHA protocols and AOTA protocols when it comes to direct service. We will meet with you. We can do things via Zoom or via Teams and also meet directly in a very safe safe environment to protect everybody's well-being. Right. All right, everyone. So time for maybe two more questions. So go ahead and get them in. Don't be shy. Um, here is one on, um, you know, we talked about, you know, when you met one child on the spectrum, you met one child on the spectrum. So knowing that there are different, you know, kind of levels and abilities and things, um, I'm just wondering, like, you know, what, what is appropriate for the developmental model? Maybe, you know, is there something else maybe for a more severe, you know, case? Um, any thoughts there? So if you look at, or if you think back to that slide where we were talking about all of the key components of our developmental approach, the positive way. So things like being child-centered, being respectful to the child, bringing in that fun factor, and building those emotional connections, those are things that we can do at any level, at any time with any child. We always wanna bring in the fun, but the big question is what is the fun for that child? So is that a child who loves you know, stacking up blocks? Do they love um, Minecraft? Do they love um, 
you know, obstacle courses, whatever it is that they love, we want to bring it in. So those same core pieces can be used with any child, regardless of their level, regardless of their age. All right. So what um, hours of operation, what are those going to be? Anyone know yet? Flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, we're flexible in terms of where, you know, uh, services take place. It, they can be in a center, they can be at home um, and online too. Um, so yeah, hours wise, I would imagine that would be as well. Okay. Absolutely. And we often end up going, um, well, depending on the family and what they're wanting. But I think we, ha we have all gotten pretty used to evening sessions. So, you know, being at a session or on Zoom at 7.51 here on the East Coast, that's not unusual for us. So, you know, let us know what works for you. Okay, one more, one more. Um, uh, do you accept well care for kids? So insurance, another insurance question. So as of now, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we were able to sign the contract with Florida Blue and that's the one that would cover everything that we're, that we're talking about here. For other insurances, you would have to call the office and there is a portion of the service that can be covered through insurance. Other portion would be pay out of pocket and we can always do like, um, um, how do you call that, super bill for you guys to, to do the reimbursement through your insurance. Uh, but again, you know, that's one of those things that each, each case is individual. So what I would do, what I would recommend is for you to contact our office and to get a, an insurance verification. Awesome, all right. Um, last question. Um, people are asking, what can they do to help? Oh, oh. spread the word. Spread the word. Thank you so much. So again, you know, this is very meaningful to us. The, what we do, we do it with our heart. We, we have so much passion in this. We really believe in this. And, and, and it's really such an honor to be in this position, to, to be able to to, to bring change to families, you know, and, and as we said, meaningful change. So what you can do to help is spread the word, talk about us, tell your friends, tell, tell people, educate your community around you. You know, there's other ways and, and this is a very meaningful thing. So I appreciate whoever asked that question. It really means a lot to us and yeah, spread the word. I don't know if anyone else has any other idea. But... Follow us on social, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and just um, help us that way. Yeah, I mean, we, we really would love to connect with you. Um, you know, if you have any questions about anything, you know, that we've talked about, actually, I'm going to put one more, more poll up, but if there's anyone that's interested in talking to somebody um, and, and being contacted, uh, feel free to just fill that out here um, on the poll. But, you know, our phone number is right there, email, you know, info at positivedevelopment.com. Um, we're just really wanting to connect and help, um, connect with the community and be involved and support you and support your family. So um, I guess with that, you know, we are really grateful for your time here tonight and for, you know, spending an hour with us. Um, and yeah, we, we hope that, that you've learned something new here today. We're here to support you um, in, in any way that we can. So thanks so much and watch for your email because uh, we'll send out the recording of all this um, afterwards. So have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye.